kind of start in our panel uh, at this point and introduce Heli from Finland. Uh, she's going to be talking about uh, data science, machine learning, 101 skills, and literacy you absolutely need. So Heli, why don't you go ahead and uh, talk about what you're going to be presenting on. Yes, thank you very much, Dan. So I have actually a couple of presentations during the conference. The first one about uh, machine learning is assuring you that there's no panic with machine learning. It is going to be easy for you, no problem at all. And the second presentation I, I will talk about today is the one I, I present together with Abby. And we are going to tell you some super skills that you will need. For this presentation, I actually decided that I will talk about evaluation. So even though you use autom autom machine learning or any of the tools, you still need to understand what is the best model. So when you have several models, which one is the best? So it depends on what kind of question you have. So are you doing clustering? Are you doing regression? Are you doing classification and so on? So depending what you are doing, what are the metrics available and what are the metrics that you should be thinking about? If we talk about clustering, the thing is that beforehand, we already decide we are going to divide them in two groups. And we tell the computer, please divide all our uh, data points to clusters, two clusters, and that's what it does. But how do I know if it's a good one or not? So is this a good model or is it not a good model? Well, of course, it depends on my data. So the, the clustering tendency should be good enough for clustering things. So if, if the data is not something that I could be clustering, it makes no sense to cluster at all. But if I do decide to cluster, there's different ways for evaluation. I can do internal evaluation, which is based on the data itself. So it, there's a thing called internal cohesion, which means that there's a high intra-cluster similarity. So those uh, data points that are inside the same cluster are similar to each other. On the other hand, I can also use a cluster separation, which means that there's a low inter-cluster similarity. So data points from different clusters, they are dissimilar. So this is something I can use uh, for evaluation. I can also do external evaluation. The quality of the clusters using external knowledge, well, usually some kind of labels or something like that. There's a lot of different kinds of measures for that. We can talk more about this during the conference. If we talk about classification, the idea is to, as accurate as possible, classify my data into classes. So here I have decided they're going to be cats and dogs. So in clustering, I don't say they are cats and dogs. I just say there's two groups and you decide what the groups are. In, in classification, I say I want to have cats and dogs separated. So this line here is separating my two groups, my classes. So how do I know how well it has been classifying my data? So of course, everybody says, I want it to be accurate. Well, what does accurate actually mean? H how do I know if it's accurate or not? One of the tools we will be talking about is the confusion matrix. I'm not going into details. We only have 10 minutes here to talk, but if you come to the session, we will go this in quite details. So using this data, I can use accuracy, precision, or recall, just some of the examples of my measures, or I could use F1 score, which is a very good uh, measure for accuracy because it can handle biased data sets. If you think about um, a disease that is very, very rare case, which of these measures would be best for that? Also, what about a logistic regression that looks like this? So it's not a straight line, it's, it's this kind of S shape. For that, I probably would use thresholds. So thresholds are actually several of these matrices that we already saw, these confusion matrices. So how do I read this? What do I understand from here? What, what does it actually mean? And the next sentence I will talk about, ROC curve, rock curve. So how is that related to the previous slide? What does this rock curve tell us? And, and what is it used for? And not to mention this AOUC, area under the curve which is really used to compare one rock to another so that I can know which of these models is better. And this is something we will talk about. Regression is a little bit different. So in regression, I'm not trying to find the 
the exact right number, I am trying to find a number that is close enough for the number that I'm looking for. And because of this close enough thing, I will use things like mean and median. So mean actually means the average of the data set. So I just count the sum and I divide it with the number of cases. While as median means the middle value. So the middle value of my data set. Mean is affected by outliers. So if my data has a lot of outliers, mean is affected by that, but median is not. And this is something that you should know when you are deciding things that you use for your measurements. Here's an example of my data set. I have values 1, 1, 3, 6, 7, 9, and 10. And the median here is 6, while as the mean is 5.28 and so on. So it is not always the same thing because med median and mean are different things. Then we talk about standard deviation. What does that mean? It's a measure of the amount of variation. So how close are the values to the mean? A low standard deviation indicates that the values are very close to the mean, while as if it's a very high one, it means the values are very spread out. A relative standard deviation or coefficient of variation means that I'm trying to figure out how the spread is in the, in the data in two different models. So I want to compare two different models to each other and understand which one is better. Because if I just take the, um, a standard deviation of two data sets that doesn't really tell me much. I need to have a, a coefficient of, uh, to be able to compare them. For regression evaluations, like I said, we are trying to figure out how far are we from, from the, the mean. Mean squared error, root mean squared error, mean absolute error, R squared. This kind of tools we have available for evaluating regression. Or maybe a correlation matrix which tells us what kind of correlation does one feature to have to another feature. So it tells how much they are correlated and is it a negative or positive correlation. So we have all kinds of tools available for evaluating the models and trying to figure out which one is the best. And this is what we will talk about in the event. And I hope you will come and hear what we have to tell. Hello, Tim Vlamis here. This is great and uh, quite excited to see your presentation. Are, are you going to talk about, you know, that uh, when we're evaluating quality, sometimes there are trade-offs, right? And yes. so accuracy may be higher in one, but we may be trading off something else. I don't Exactly. That's what we are going to talk about. So the measurement you should choose depends on the use case you have. So what kind of data you have and what you are trying to find from the data. So it completely depends on that. So I can't say that you should always use F1 or you should always use accuracy. It always depends. And that's something that we will talk about in the presentation. And I hope it will be uh, something that people learn a lot about. Well, thank you, Heli. Uh, thank you. Going through all, all of that. Uh, next, uh, we have Philippe. Uh, we had Heli from Finland. 